Hi there, I'm Dave Horton. I'm the creator of Jam Bones, the open source CPaaS for service providers. And in this video, we're going to do some fun stuff. We're going to do live call control. That means using the REST API to manipulate calls that are in progress. If you haven't already, go create your free account at jambones.org so that you can follow along with me. We're going to be using the Node.js SDK, and if this is your first introduction to that, you may want to watch my talk on getting started with the Node.js SDK. Okay, now, what we're going to build here is an application that shows you how to do attended transfer on Jambones. As a side note, if you go to Twilio's website and look up how to do attended transfer on Twilio, you'll find they can't do it the right way. As you'll see in their blog post, to do an attended transfer on Twilio, you need to put all the parties in a conference and then manipulate call legs. Well, that's not an attended transfer. That's some kind of janky workaround. In the service provider world that you and I live in, we need to do things right. An attended transfer, done right, works like this. An A party calls a B party. A puts B on hold, or it can go the other way. A then calls C and talks to C. Finally, A connects C to B and drops out of the call himself. None of that should require a conference. Let's think about what it does require to do properly. You need to be able to connect two parties. You need to be able to park and unpark calls. You need to be able to do these things in the middle of calls. Trigger either by DTMF, possibly an API. Not all that complicated. You can do all that on Jambones, and we'll see how when we build this application. So let's head over to our laptops and start building. All right, well, let's get right into the code. Now, I mentioned this is a node.js application, and you'll be able to find it on GitHub. It's a public repo, and in the comments section on YouTube, I'll provide a link to that repo in case you want to check it out or have a look at it. Now, in a Node.js application, we're going to use the Jambones Node client. So you can see in line two here, we are requiring that, and then specifically an object called Webhook Response um, that we're going to use to return payloads to webhooks. So let's get right into it. This call is going to start with an inbound call where the caller is going to be prompted for a phone number, and then we're going to make an out dial. So A is calling in. He's prompted for a phone number. We're then dialing B, who is at that phone number. Pretty simple application to start with. You can see that we're creating a new webhook response, and we're using the gather verb. And I've just abstracted the parameters into a variable because I'm going to use it in a couple places in the application. But you can see I am looking to collect digits only, not speech in this case. When I collect something, I'm going to invoke this other webhook, this action hook, with the information that I've collected. And I'm going to prompt with a prompt um, to collect the phone number. So simple prompt and collect operation. And when we collect something, the action hook, the webhook gets called, and we come down here. Now, here we're going to look at the digits that were collected. And if there were 10 digits, then we're going to outdial that number. So once again, we create a webhook response object, and then we're using the say verb and then the dial verb to outdial. We have a type of phone number indicating that we want the call to complete through one of our configured carriers. And interestingly, we have DTMF capture group applied. So this means while the call is connected and A is talking to B, we're listening for any of these DTMF capture groups, star two or star three. And if they are detected, then we're going to call this other webhook, this DTMF hook slash DTMF. So A is called B. He's talking to B. He wants to do a warm transfer, an attended transfer. He hits star two to put B on hold. What happens? Well, our DTMF hook gets invoked. We come down here. We look at what we've collected. This is during the call now. And we can see if it's a star two, we're going to create this JSON object. And we're providing two new applications, one for the B party and one for the A party. The B party is also known as the child call, child call SID, and the A party is the parent call SID. So for the child call, we're providing a new webhook, slash park, and we're passing a query parameter, parking slot name. Um, and for the A party, we're simply routing him back to the, attend the, the root application here, which prompts again for another phone number. 
But here, we're going to give the B party a new application, and we're passing a query parameter of a parking slot name. Now, when it comes to parking a call, a parking I've used the term parking slot. Parking slot is nothing more than a queue. It's a queue that is intended only to ever have one member. That's all. So we need simply to make sure that that queue only ever has one member. And one easy way to do that is to generate a unique name for the queue. In our case, we already have a unique, a unique identifier, which is the call SID, so I'm using that. But in your application, you may choose to use something else or do it completely differently. For instance, you may have 10 well-known parking slot identifiers and you want to use those as your queue names. That's fine. You would just have a way of identifying which queue is open in your application or your database, and then you would choose and use that queue. So here is where we're actually doing the rest call control. Client calls update. We're updating a call. We're giving it the call SID to identify the call leg we're updating, the call we're updating, and we're giving it a, a JSON object indicating what we want to do. And again, in this case, what we want to do is give both legs of the call new applications to execute. Now, um, this client object was actually created um, in a different file here, the root file. You can see here, again, it's from, uh, we require the Jambones node client, and then we create a client object that will be our REST client. We have to pass in some information, our account SID, our API key, and the base URL. Okay, so we've called this, and now it's in the middle of the call, and we've given both the A party and the B party new applications to execute. The B party executes the slash park call hook. We come down here, and we can see we get the parking slot name out of the query that we provided. And all we're doing, as you can see, is enqueuing that call in a queue with that name. So that's it. This is the B party. B party is now queued in a queue with the name that we gave it. Now, at this point in time, up to this point in time, the A leg and the B leg had a relationship, sort of a parent-child relationship. We often speak of the parent call SID and the child call SID. When we, give it, when we do this and give it a new application, give the child call a new application to execute via live call control, it essentially becomes its own first-class call leg. At this point, it has no relationship with the A leg, and we can control it completely separately. And the A leg can go off and do, do its thing. So we've got the B party queued, and the A party has gone off, collected a new phone number, dialed a new party, a party C, and we're back here. And now when the uh, A party hits star three, we'll come back through here. And on star three, you can see we're giving a child a new call hook to the child leg, the C party. We're not giving any new call hook to the A party, so he will drop at this point. We could have the A party go off and do something, but our intent is at the end of the warm transfer that the, the party sort of operating the transfer can drop off, so we don't give him a call hook. The C party, we give this attended trans slash complete transfer, and we pass him or her the parking slot identifier as well, so that will come down here. The C party now will get this new application. We're simply going to return an application, and all we do is tell it to dequeue the first member, which is going to be the only member, in that queue name that we previously parked B in. So now B and C are talking, and A has dropped off. So it's pretty simple. OK, so now with the help of my two willing participants, we will do a quick demo of the application. Hey, how you doing? Hold on one sec. I'm going to. I'm doing just fine. Okay. I'm going to transfer you to Savannah. Hold on a sec. Okay. Please enter the ten-digit phone number you would like to dial, followed by the pound sign. Please hold while we.
we connect you to 7819759077. Hey, how you doing? I'm going to I'm going to connect you to um, Susan. We've implemented call transfer in Jambones. As always, if you have any questions, please email us at support at jambones.org or just hit me up directly at davh at jambones.org. That's it for now. I'll see you next time, and you have a great day. <laughs>